Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where we will deliver you tips and techniques to advance yourself and anything you decide to do in life. I am your host, Dom Brinkman, and every Thursday, I will interview authors, especially self-published ones from various walks of life, who will deliver you information and inspiration to help you charge forward. On a quick side note, be sure to check out my book, Going North, on Amazon.com. It's available on ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North podcast, we have, you guessed it, another author, but not just any author. You're about to really go north with no limits because I got one heck of a guest right here. This young man right here, he's young and ambitious and he was addicted to alcohol, which caused him to total six cars. But he was able to find the will to find the way and to find his why to become a published author. And not only that, he is documenting his success journey as he's going on through life because it's one awesome thing to hear from people who have been there and done it. But it's another thing to hear from someone who's still hungry and in there to fight. And you guys are probably wondering who the heck I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one, the only Chris Washington. How are you today, sir? I'm great. How are you doing? Uh, doing fabulous indeed. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, so I just gave a short little introduction based off of the Amazon goodness from your book, 21 Laws to Being Limitless. Mind filling in the gaps where I may have missed some things? Yes. Everything's pretty much up to date. I, I do landscaping. Um, right now, I'm a maintenance tech at an apartment complex. And I've always had dreams to be a millionaire. So I've always been studying personal development, guys like Grant Cardone, top performers, top athletes. that kind of put together the habits of the most successful in a short, concise book so that one can be their best self. Great stuff indeed. And I like the whole shortcut method to just giving it to them because we're living in the freaking information age where there's so much darn information. And we're competing with gerbils in terms of our attention spans, and that people don't have time for 600 pages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nobody's reading 300, 400 page, pages of books now. You know, I kept it 80 pages and under, and you should have saw the first version. The first version was only 10 pages, but I wanted to expand on it more. The short version will be available soon, too, as well, on Amazon. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, because I de- remember, remember downloading the first version. Like, wait, is this, is this like a series of Instagram pics or something? Like, this is great stuff here, but like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you press the next button and the book was all like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Appreciate the reminder. Time to go out there and freaking burst through. Yeah, man. So it's, it's really powerful. I mean, totaling six cars. I mean, some folks may total one car and not make it out alive, but you made it through six, man. Like, how, how did that even happen? Oh, man, I used to drink and drive. I used to party, just making a lot of bad decisions, a lot of bad choices. When you do wrong for a while and it eventually catches up to you, you know, it'll eventually come to light. It's just something that, that happened. Uh, I got one DUI in total six cars. But for me, it was the DUI that actually did me in because I wasn't able to drive for three years. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, like I wasn't used to taking the bus, um, so I had to get used to that. But that that was one of the painful experiences. I was like, oh, my God, no, something's going to change here, and I'm, and I'm sick of this. Well, there you go. You have it, folks. Avoid that DUI. <laughs> you will be very, very far out of commission. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to be riding that bus. You'll be like, oh, Dad, I got to get out of here. This is a trap. <laughs> this is a mm. freaking trap. And all all it really was was wasting time, I found. Those times of partying and, you know, it was like, it's not getting me anywhere. I'm losing myself, losing those around me. Let me focus in on me. Let me take responsibility. And I learned the responsibility from Grant. He said, take full responsibility of your life. So I took full responsibility of, the, of my addiction and turned it around. True words spoken, indeed. Because, I mean, 
it, it's all nice to party once in a while, but if you take it to to the extreme level and keep toes on cars, and then <laughs> and, and that's me. I'm definitely extremist at whatever I do. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, all right, that, that, that life isn't for me. Let me uh focus on the good. Yeah, man. Glad glad you're still here too, man. I mean that <laughs> not everyone can come from that. <laughs> I mean, nobody yeah, gets out of life. Front on, was, front on the family, my friends, and uh, you know, people are actually shocked. You know, how far it came along. Get true, yeah, trust me. I'd be shocked too. Be like, huh? Six cars total? Six? So you got the book, the 21 laws? Yes, got the first version and also got the Kindle version. Uh, ordered the paperback version as well. So I haven't been able to get my hands on a physical copy yet, but I did flip through some of the good stuff indeed. Especially some of the laws. I'll send you the concise version too. You take a look at that. Send it to Facebook. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Sweet. Have cool. you ever seen the movie Limitless? No, I never have. Uh, who, who's in it? It was uh, by Bradley Cooper. He was the main character. He took like this pill, allowed him to access 100 percent of his brain. He became like a. He was a bum writer. Then he turned into like a millionaire, you know, high end stockbroker. It was pretty cool. So I was like, I wonder what one can do naturally to be the most limitless version of themselves. That was also another motivator for me to write the book. You know, we're, we are we are our habits. We're either doing good habits or bad habits. So I took the habits of the most successful millionaires and billionaires and put it in a nice, easy read. You have great stuff. And did I need to see that movie, though, the Limitless movie? Like, how, that, that must not be too old then. Probably, like, what, five years old, two years old? 2011. Oh, 2011, okay. Okay, yeah. seven years old. Okay, l- lucky seven. That that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll send you a link on that as well. So out of all these great laws, twenty-one of them. What would be probably? I'm a, I mean, they're all beneficial. I mean, the give, 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 and the meditate especially that centers you. So, but out of all of them, what would be the one that really propels you probably a little bit more than the others? If you could just choose one of them. The gratitude section. That one that's been the most powerful for me. Practicing gratitude because if we're not grateful for what we have, we won't have more. I heard of countless people who practice gratitude and it just multiplies their miracles in life. And one guy went from homeless to multimillionaire just by practicing his gratitude. He didn't have nothing. He was homeless. He was living out of a car. So he started practicing gratitude. And that's when he really didn't have anything. And he became uh, pretty much super rich. I, n- I noticed that like a lot of billionaires also uh, practice that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to incorporate that in my daily routine so i found that that's been the best and you know you're just more positive and i think that's what was the strongest law that i think is in that book gratitude yeah i have to highly agree with you i mean it's, especially with the fact that if if you want more out of life you got to be really grateful for what you have already because you never know what what could happen to me especially with loved ones uh remember i think it was five days before my father passed uh Thanked him for everything that he did for me because he was on his deathbed at the time of dementia. And then when those five days passed, he he just gave up the fight. He just couldn't take it anymore. It, it was just too much for him. So it was like, yeah, you got to really just be grateful for what you have. And if you're thankful for the folks around you, you got to tell them thanks, too, because you never know when, when they could leave. Yeah, and the same thing happened with my mom. Her dad, her dad died when she was 21, and I was only three at the time. He died of cancer, and but he he was like he wrote a book as well. But his book was about he had like poems of his life and different things. But he, he owned like sixty different properties. Oh wow! That was so he was a yeah he's a real inspiring guy. Real uh, he's a real hard worker. Did a lot for his time. He helped his community. He's always about proving people. And so he was he was one of those guys that uh, were legends in the family. So I, I'm like I'm going to be the next legend. I'm going to be the first millionaire in my family. The goal is to be a multi-millionaire by the age of 35. There you go. And this is the era to do it yeah. in, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, to go back to that, her, her father's death, she said she extracted. He did so much in his life that, yeah, she was she was sad and everything that she lost him, but she learned so much from him that so she couldn't be too upset to be mad. I mean, of course, that's her father. Extract the life lesson. That's a great thing, too. It's always great if, if you have parents and that you can learn from them because, Sometimes folks may have parents and they may not be grateful for them. And folks out here may have no parents at all. They may have been in foster homes all their lives. Yeah. And you just never know. And 
it's even mm-hmm. it's even twice as great when when you're one of when one of your parents, if not both of them, have left like a big impact on not just you, the child, but also their community as well. So that's really powerful indeed. And it ties back into practicing gratitude. So what I do every day is I write 10 things that I'm grateful for. And then sometimes I'm, I envision it as well as, as, as writing it. So say, uh, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my healthy family. I'm grateful to have a home. You know what I mean? Like, I'm grateful to, to be driving now. That's those kind of things. If you want to write 10 things that you're grateful for every day, you'll see a major impact on your phone, on your state of mind as well. You feel more happy. You feel more peaceful. You're not looking at all the things you don't have. You're looking at, wow, I already have a lot. I'm already rich in spirit. So the other stuff will come naturally. Amen, indeed. <laughs> that that truly is a great key to happiness, too, like you just said. I mean, because a lot of folks are like, what? Some may say, some people may even ask me, like, why are you happy all the time? It's like, dude, like, I'm six feet above instead of six feet below. I mean, it, like, somebody didn't make it today. Somebody had to stay down today. I was able to get up. It, and you're able to get up, too. So got to be yeah. grateful for that. Power of gratitude, indeed. Yeah, so, I would, so that's what I would suggest everybody do is have a morning routine and implement that implement gratitude don't miss a day without gratitude probably need to make that a social media post right there don't miss out on the gratitude yeah yeah what i do is i'll send you my concise version of my book and then um you can send it out to all your all your people and then uh if they want if they want the more uh condensed version then they can get it on amazon Woohoo! i'll send you the super short version and then uh just so everybody can i just want everybody to get ahead in life that's right not just the head on top of the shoulders right yep so in all your studying and all your research and turning your life around, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to write and publish their first book? Well, the, the super fast way w- will be uh, to pre-write the chapters and then go back and uh, with bullet points, fill it in, fill in each chapter as like a summary for each thing. So now you got the main idea all down, so now that part's complete. And then you go back and fill it in. And then once you fill it all in, then the book's basically complete. Instead of waiting one to two years to make it uh, fully complete, just and and that could be done in a day or two, a rough draft. Huh, I like that. That that that's that awesome. Just uh, just outline the book, do a summary, and then just fill in the rest of the gaps later. Yep. Yeah, because some folks may be sitting on stories. They yeah, get, waiting to tell get the main years. ideas. Don't get into uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Get it down. What, what are you trying to convey? What's the chapter's going to be about? And then go back and fill it in with the bullet points for each thing. And then, and then once that's done, then you go back and, you know, fill it in even more. That's it. Amen, indeed. Amen, indeed. So with all the books that you've read, what book would probably be in your top three? That would you recommend for others to read in addition to the 21 Laws to Being Limitless? The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. The, the first book I read that. Well, it was actually his audio version of it. Just like I told you before, he, he talked about taking personal responsibility of every everything, every area of your life, because he talks about bad things always happen to victims. And the bosses, people in power, they take full responsibility so that they're more in control of situations. It's more empowering to take responsibility than to blame others or to blame circumstances. So, yes, I was the alcoholic, but I'm not going to blame anybody. This is This is what I have. It's my responsibility to get myself out of it. That's more empowering than, oh, I'm just an alcoholic. Or, you know, woe is me, you know? <laughs> yeah, time time out for that crap. Stuff happens, but a lot of the stuff, <laughs> you got to take responsibility for it. At the end of the day, you decide to take and, that. And, and, that's, and that's actually one of the rules in the power of addiction. Since it helped me so much, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to add that in there. Taking full responsibility, oh, yeah. That, that's a game changer for success. Your addictions, your marriage, anything, every area, take full responsibility. If you're not where you're at income-wise, look at what you're doing. What are you doing wrong? What can you do better? Yeah, that's true. Got to always sharpen that sword. Got to grind the axe. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, the 10X rule, I, I, I fully agree. I, that is easily in, like, my top top 100 books of all time because it is so great, especially, especially the, the audio. audio. Especially the audio version. Yes. With his voice and everything. Yes, yes. I love Grant <laughs> just just putting his yeah. essence into the book. Yes. Mm. I probably listened to that book probably three to five times all already. You you probably listened to it like twenty times, didn't you? <laughs> oh yeah. 
got it. Yeah, I got it on Audible. I, I always listen to that. Yeah, especially I think it's I think it was chapter fifteen where he talks about burning the place down. Mm-hmm. Oh, we gotta keep yeah, that. That was one of my favorite as well. Yep, gotta keep that fire stoked, baby. Gotta keep adding wood to the fire, baby. Yeah, it's just about, you know, taking massive action. It really takes excuses out the equation and like, okay, what are you doing? What do you need to be doing more of? This is how I became successful. So listen to me. So I'm definitely going to listen to them. Yeah, especially when they have a track record of success and they can prove it too. It's, it's really a great thing. With all of your newly acquired knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself if you were 25 in 2018? I would say people often wonder what's one's life purpose. I believe everyone's life purpose is to be the very best. Be the best you that you could possibly be. If you're, if you're a stock boy, be the best stocker. If you're a laborer, be the best laborer. If you're a lawyer, be the best lawyer in this space. I think, I think that's the true purpose of life is to be the very best version of yourself that you could possibly be in the moment. Now you notice it often changes at maybe six years old. I wanted to be a NBA player at 10 years old. I wanted to be in the NFL. I wanted to be a professional boxer at one point. So your purpose changes, but the best, the thing you can have control of is to be the best version of yourself in the moment. Amen. Indeed. <laughs> Amen. Indeed. <laughs> That, that That is so true. I mean, boxing is great while you're young, but I'm not sure if you want to be 75 stepping inside of a boxing ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it changes from circumstances. Like, you may have a dream, then you had a kid, now, now it kind of changes, and you're, you know what I mean? You kind of go a different direction. Oh, yeah, yep. Kids will change things in more ways than one, and I'm not just talking about quarters out your pocket. <laughs> it's, it's <not> mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, do, you, do you have any kids? Oh, no, sir. I just work around kids a lot, work at a library. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it all the time. So I'm just trying to be the best version of myself before I have any kids. There you go. So that way when the kid comes, they got someone who is really for them. They probably built a war chest to protect them, metaphorically speaking, in terms of their education and all that good stuff. Definitely, definitely. Now, I am going to be a little bit, I'm going to be a little bit of a tyrant on them. That's just because I want the best for them. (laughs) I mean, that's how some of the best successful people (laughs) became success because their parents pushed them to the limits. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, Joe Jackson or Michael Jackson, right? (laughs) Yeah. I'm just, I believe that we got to be the examples that we want to see in the world. I'm like, well, nobody really talks about this. They don't talk about it in schools. They don't. So let me do my own research and put together a little book just to help others. Let me help my family members. I start with trying to help to motivate friends and family and then expand. So I'm going to help other people too. Close myself. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Just reaching them. Re- reach people where they're at. It's kind of yeah. like, it's almost like a 10th degree black belt run, uh, possibly teaching a new white belt and they haven't taught them. A- a very, very long time. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. It's like trying to meet people where they're at, kind of half wave. If that's a better word yeah. for it. All right, so for those who want to keep in contact with you beyond the book, where can they find you on your social medias and whatnot? You can find me on Facebook, Chris Washington. Um, if you want to email me personally, just dwashington895 at gmail.com. And those are two main, via email and Facebook. Alrighty, wonderful indeed. So for those out there who've listened to this episode of the Going North podcast and Chris's wonderful goodness, go ahead and pick up five magical copies of that 21 Laws to Being Limitless and unleash your potential and share Chris an email if you want to get to know the brother more because he is on his way to some major success. I mean, I picked up the ebook and it's got some good stuff in there because folks will always need reminders on what it takes to get on that grind to be the best versions of themselves. Thanks a bunch for your listening ears on the Going North podcast. I hope you really, really enjoyed that episode. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those who love podcasts and love listening to some inspiration and motivation. And keep a lookout for the sequel to Going North Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself in October 2018.
And if you'd like to connect with me directly, feel free to shoot me an email at dombraveman at gmail.com. Make the rest of your week the best of your week.